What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more classical music, and indeed we're moving on to the second movement of Beethoven's fifth uh, piano concerto, The Emperor, uh, as conducted by Karl Baum and performed uh, on piano by Maurizio Pellini. So uh, I mentioned uh, at some point during the first movement that the second movement of this piece is one of my all-time favorites. Like, I just absolutely love the sublimity of it, um, and I will now reiterate that before we start. Um, it just really finds this sweet, warm, comforting, and familiar sonic terrain. Um, and indeed, it's the kind of piece that, like, even as you're hearing it for the first time, it feels familiar. It feels like home. Um, you know, I've often, in a different context, talking about, like, movies and television shows, so that, you know, some of the very uh, best creative work can make you feel almost nostalgic for a place or a social situation in which you've never actually been and I, I feel this second movement accomplishes that it just it feels like humanity um, so yeah I when I heard this piece for the first time I found it very moving I might even have teared up I'm not sure but I do remember you know it wasn't the first listen but one of the earliest listens I had of this was when I was a kid um, you know, maybe late single digits, because I think this movie came out mid to late 80s, but the movie Dead Poet Society, um, a very powerful movie, and like, I don't know if you've, <laughs> the ending of the movie now, the, because of what happened to Robin Williams, is like almost even like meta profound, it's crazy, um, but that movie is um, one of my favorites, it ultimately made me, it was one of the things that made me want to be a teacher, um, <clears throat> and there's a part in that movie where uh, Professor Keating, uh, uh, Robin Williams' character, is talking to another teacher at the school, and he's talking about his personal life and this woman who has to live away from him because I think she's a teacher at a different university. Um, and this piece is playing in the background, and I remember, like, I had already known the piece, so when the scene started and I heard it, I was like, oh my god, what a great accompaniment to the accompaniment to this scene. But in the scene, he's talking about how he wishes he could be with this person who makes him feel at home and is, you know, really the light of his life and so on. And it just, it was such a great choice. So it just, like, even drove the, the point home how much, even further, I should say, how much I love this piece. So uh, here we go without any further ado. Um, this is the second movement, which is an adagio un poco mosso, or masso. Um... Yeah, and this is, as I said, conducted by Karl Baum, uh, performed by the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, and the soloist is Maurizio Pellini. And this is the second movement of the Emperor Concerto, the fifth piano concerto by Ludwig von Beethoven. Mm -hmm. I apologize, the vinyl has a little wear. But it is still nice when I can play some classical vinyl. I have hundreds of classical CDs, but maybe only a couple dozen classical vinyl. It's like this sweet, mellow, calm place that you don't ever want to leave. Inviting setup, what can the piano, piano add on top of this to sweeten it even further?
there are works of art that momentarily, for brief, fleeting moments in time, make me less cynical about humanity and what we're capable of. This is such a moment. this with any number of like actual physical environments like I was just thinking like walking down a, a pathway like on an autumn evening with again with like the leaves falling but again I think for different people that the specific visual image might be different but the feeling the sentiment I think is what Beethoven successfully got at and achieved say also, Mr. Polini, you know, showing his virtuosic uh, hand a bit. But it was interesting after that bright sort of, you know, increasingly shining sort of build-up, it then just kind of goes back to meandering down this path. Maybe like evening light, twilight. Sort of getting to a little bit of that mysterious piano line from the first movement there, like without the sort of, you know, maybe uncomfortable edge, but sort of the feeling of that moment was not entirely dissimilar from those parts of the first movement. But like again, softened, made more subtle. <coughs> First time, a little doubt, a little ambiguity creeping in, but 
still overpowered for the most part by the calm, pleasant atmosphere. Beethoven here is like next level. So yeah. He slow walks you into at the end of the second movement into this theme which will dominate and triumphantly uh, resonate in the third movement. Incredible. Um, I did forget about that moment at the end of the second movement. Um, like I said, I feel like that's next level composition that's sort of like, you know, you're not that um, there aren't other pieces by him and other composers where a theme is sort of foreshadowed or teased at and then eventually like taken into a more prominent role. Um, but just the way the second movement ends leading into that third movement, that's, that's brilliant. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, shout out to Dave. Uh, yeah, he commented on the first movement and it reminded me that, you know, I really got to get back to doing some more of these uh, classical reactions because there are some people out there who are very knowledgeable and very passionate about the music that I will always love. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. I'll be back for the third movement, and then I mentioned I maybe want to do a Dvorak uh, symphony after that, um, but we'll see what happens. Nevertheless, thank you for listening and watching. I will see you next time. Peace.